Okay, Deputy Mayor, uh, we are live and uh, feel free to take it away. All right, thank you uh, to the Deputy Clerk. So I would like to remind everyone that our meetings are web streamed and televised and we would ask that you ensure your phones are on silent mode and to keep your camera on and mute yourself when not speaking. And of course, remember to unmute yourself if speaking and please use the Microsoft Teams raise hand feature icon to be called upon and remove it when, after you're finished speaking. And since the chair today is technically challenged, if I don't see a raised hand icon, say something or wave your hands because uh, my screens don't always show everything. So I will now call the public hearing committee to order. We have a mover and seconder to approve the agenda as presented. Councilor Van Andriesi, Councilor Martin, all in favor? That is carried. Uh, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, I now officially open the public meetings held under the Municipal Act, the Planning Act, and County Policy. Please be advised that to preserve your right to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal, you are required to make comments or provide written submissions prior to the passage of a bylaw. It is important to note that no final decisions are being made on these matters today. These me meetings are to allow the public to provide initial comments and further reports will come forward at a future date. The first application is CD 22-012, uh, then NPL 2022-014. An application has been received to facilitate a temporary use bylaw to permit a residential use for the purpose of transitory accommodation for migrant labor, new immigrants and mm -hmm. refugees for a three year period for a period of three years. Titan Trailers Inc. And on behalf of Mike and Sandy Klopfer and Agent Land Pro Planning Solutions has put forth an application affecting the land described as 695-711 Schaefer Side Road. And Nicole, will you be presenting the staff report? Yes. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, good so this is an application proposing to amend the zoning bylaw to apply a temporary use bylaw to facilitate the temporary accommodations of immigrants, refugees, and migrant workers. The subject lands are currently zoned and designated agricultural and are surrounded by agricultural uses. Um, as can be identified on the slide, the subject lands are occupied by existing structures previously utilized for the federal government's Delhi Agricultural Research Station um, and the Southwest Fire Academy. The applicant is requesting to, uh, a temporary use bylaw to permit a residential use for the purpose of transitory accommodations for the per period of three years. The proposed bylaw by would apply only to the portion of the parcel occupied by the existing structures. The remaining lands would remain zoned agricultural without a temporary use permitted. Uh, the application was submitted with supporting documents, including a planning justification report, a functional servicing letter, a traffic impact brief as well. Uh, given the unique nature of the proposal, the submission was also accompanied by letters of support from three community and government organizations specific to the interests of the popula population that is proposed to be housed. In regards to agency comments, Additional comments are still being submitted. However, a comment of note comes from the building department that uh, identifies a maximum occupant load for the proposed structures um, at a 45 person limit. Uh, well, no comments had been received prior to the submission of the report uh, before council today. A uh, written public comment was submitted and circulated to council this morning. The public comment will be further explored and addressed with the recommendation report. In terms of next steps, uh, the review of all circulated agencies and departments comments uh, will be next. And then following that, a recommendation report, as always, will be brought forward to Council for review. That concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to respond to any questions Council uh, or the public may have. Thank you, Nicole. Are there any questions to staff from the committee? Councillor Rabbits. Thank you, and through you, 
Um, my question for staff is, are we going to be hearing from the applicant today uh, or agent? Um, and should I be reserving my questions for them if I had some? Yeah, they're coming up next. Counselor. They're coming up next. OK, um, I'll give I will give staff a first uh, kick at the can because I know that this is a unique uh, application. We have some letters of support um, that don't typically accompany um, a a development application. Um, and I was wondering um, outside of our regular planning reports, if we're going to have someone speak to those letters of support either on staff uh, or perhaps the agent would like to provide some commentary on those those letters. Mike. For you, Councillor Van Passen. Uh, so I would defer to the applicants um, and their agent, who I believe are on the call today, um, to first answer those um, uh, questions, um, and then we can follow up if there's further uh, required information. Could we wait till after they make their presentation, Councillor Rabbits, and they can answer that uh, question later then? That would be uh, appropriate and fine with me. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure someone was speaking to them because it's very interesting. And, and then it won't count as part of their five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea, yes. Any other questions from the committee? So that was a pretty good segue. We have the agent and owner and representatives from Titan Trailers at the meeting. Uh, Mike Sullivan from Land Pro. Planning Solutions, uh, will you be presenting with the aid of a slide deck or? Uh... Yes, Mr. Chair, I do. I have a slide deck. And if I may the do a. Uh... screen is yours, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, sir. Let's see if I can get this one going properly. Can everyone, can you see this, Mr. Chair? I, I can, but that doesn't guarantee much. <laughs> I'm going to go in this in this sort of old style uh, at this moment, but uh, thank you to Nicole for making the opening presentation on this matter. I'm looking at the other screen. I have two screens going just so you know I'm not ignoring you. I'm just I'm just speaking to the screen. So as you mentioned, uh, as we mentioned, we're 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 approaching or we're applying to the County of Norfolk for a temporary use bylaw to support local industry. The intent here is to provide initially 40 spaces for for uh, immigrants for Afghan refugees and ultimately up to 80. So the initial is 40 and then it goes up to approximately 80 after that subject to some conditions being met. Actually, yeah, that's, that's. So we have a significant shortfall available of available workers in the local area. There's impacts to industry's ability to operate at full capacity and housing crisis is exacerbating the labor shortage is now council I'll let, uh, or committee i'll let you read the rest of the summary there essentially what's happening here is that uh michael and sandy clover who are the applicants not titan trailers i'll note it's them personally uh they are making application to convert the current delhi research station into a temporary uh accommodation for for transient workers so background there's incredible demand. I will note this presentation went to council last fall in basically the same format for information. I won't, I'll get to the, the meat of the issue for the public's benefit. There's the background, there's the proposal. It's a retrofit. Actually, hang on a sec, I apologize, Mr. Chair. I've put it up the wrong, uh, the wrong folder there. Wrong presentation. I do apologize for that. Yeah. Thought I had this in place. My apologies. Hmm. Well, it's all like magic to me. You just click a few things and it magically appears. And you're getting us. Ah, crumb. We're over here. That doesn't match. I'm going to go. I'm just going to go on the basis of what I have here. I apologize for that. I should have looked at it previously and I did not. A lot of different ones. Actually, I believe the clerk has a copy of the presentation I forwarded. Would they be able to share that? 
Um, I'll have to pull it up. It may take a little bit of a moment, um, but I'm happy to assist. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing because this does this does this has no benefit to the to the public in this one. Let me see if I can call it up as well from the emails. I, I had this all ready to go. I thought it was all ready to go. So my sincere apologies to council. Well, maybe you could answer Councillor Rabbit's question about the letters of uh, support while we're waiting for the uh, deputy clerk to bring that up. Happy to. What uh, what questions, Mr. Chair? What questions would be would be at issue? Councillor Rabbit. Thank you and through you. Um, I just wanted to recognize the uniqueness of this application and that it did have some supporting letters that uh, traditionally aren't accompanying a uh, development application. And I was hoping to provide you an opportunity to introduce uh, those organizations and uh, provide a brief summary for the public um, as to the reasoning and rationale uh, behind their support. Do you have those letters? Uh, specifically CCLC uh, and our friends with immigration. Uh, Mr. Chair, th uh, through to Council Rabbits, I would suggest that Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Clover are in the audience. They would be uh, best best suited to answer yeah. this. Yes, okay. hello, uh, Dave Holmes here, talking for Mike and Sandy Clover. I've been dealing with uh, CCLC. Uh, it's a cross cultural learning center, uh, primarily in the in respect of bringing immigrants to this area. And they what they do is facilitate the uh, immersion of the of the people and the integration of the people into the local community. So they provide, make sure that they have access to schools. They make sure that they have access to clothing. They make sure they have access to health care. Uh, they give language training. Um, so they're the local contacts that basically do everything in terms of facilitating people, uh, the immigrants into the local communities where they put them. And we've been working with Immigration Canada with the director of the Afghan program, and it may not be Afghans, actually. Uh, we will discuss with them about potential Ukraine refugees, but it, initially it would be refugees that go into this facility. <coughs> Immigration is very excited because this is a unique project. They have very little housing available in cities or other places for, uh, for refugees right now. Um, the last we heard, there was over 1,200 refugees currently housed in hotels, and they were looking for places to put them. And they thought this was a, a very unique opportunity to put them in a rural area in a uh, privately sponsored uh, facility, uh, and also have the ability for them to be able to provide jobs for them. So, and I will say that uh, Mike and Sandy Clover have offered jobs through Titan, but we've also stated to CCLC that those people will be free to work anywhere in the local community. And several other businesses have reached out with opportunities as well. So uh, the, uh, the, the purpose of the repositioning of the facility is to provide the residence for the people. And it would be set up with, uh, Mike can go through the presentation, with, with six individual housing residences. So it would actually be family, we, we would be we would be housing and not uh, not individual migrant workers. So it would be refugee families that would be initially housed there. Is that sufficient, Councillor uh, Rabbits? Very good, thank you. Okay, Mr. Sullivan, I see your <laughs> presentation's on the screen now. And Mr. Uh, Sullivan, if you could just direct me when to hit the next slide, that'd be appreciated. By all means, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So the opportunity here is to repurpose for transitional housing as uh, as Mr. Holmes has already mentioned about housing refugees from Afghanistan. It's for meant for temporary seasonal housing. It's a solution. The solution short term, as we've discussed with county staff, is temporary use by law. Longer term, there are various solutions available and it is subject to further further discussion. So I will repeat. I repeat for the public and council that this is a temporary solution for up to three years and a longer term solution will be sought uh, after that. Next slide, please. This is just give you an idea of, of the Afghan refugees, the, the background to them. Uh, next slide, please. So the details, the property was purchased by Mike and Sandy Clover, so I know it is owned personally by them. It's not owned by Titan Trailers. It's designated and zoned agricultural which I know there's a comment from the public. We can deal with that, deal with that afterwards. Historical use 
Agricultural Research Station established in 1933. It then became a fire fire training school, which I understand was under a temporary use bylaw, which expired in 2019. Fast forward to today, the current main building is not occupied. I've been in it half dozen times. It is not occupied at the moment, and the building was constructed at a, in 1999 at a cost of approximately $8 million. The purpose of this uh, application is to supply purpose-built housing. It provides humanitarian assistance, it repurposes a vacant facility, and it gives us a, a bridge to a long-term solution. Next slide, please. Here's the facility, which many of you know. You can see Schaefer Side Road in the south end. We show the main building, common room, etc. What I will note to the public and the council is that there is no new construction proposed. No new buildings are proposed. No houses are being proposed. Everything is being done internal to the existing buildings. Next slide, please. There is an outline. I'll take you through it. The red highlighted areas, this is in the main building that you saw in the last slide. The main, build, main building is going to have the red areas are three suites that are going to be for families, which will be completely self-contained apartments. The blue shaded areas will be three suites interchangeable between family and uh, single person dorms. Again, they could uh, be one, two, three, four people per, per dorm. The green areas, addition of washrooms and showers on the bottom left hand corner. Utility rooms are in the north end, so we would have um, heating and uh, ventilation there. There's a kitchen and there's all the facilities required to live to live comfortably. And the final area is the yellow, which is the very top end is the common. Actually, I guess in the center, I apologize. It's sort of a mustard look common training rooms. So that would be areas for teaching, for training, for education, for socialization, etc. All there. Next slide, please. This is uh, some photographs that were taken of the inside of the building that you just saw. This is the before pictures, and you can see the outside of the building, the current building in the top left hand, uh, top left corner. You can see one of the family suites, or actually one of the, one of the suites in the middle and one on the right, and then you can see washroom and shower facilities on the left hand side. Next slide, please. So the phases on this one are six apartment style units. February 2022 is a little bit, little bit soon in this case. We've actually been working, Mr. Mr. Clover have been working with Immigration Canada towards an April, May deadline at this point. So we've got, a, we're trying to work through the county application or the county uh, approval process as quickly as possible towards 40 people coming into this unit. That would be part of phase one, three family suites, 10 people per suite, training facilities, suites feature, you, you see that all noted there. Phase two would be an additional three suites, 10 to 14 people per suite. Phase three would be the common room, outdoor improvements and greenhouses. Next phase, or next slide please. What I've done here is just showing the top. Um, as Mr. Holmes mentioned earlier, there are uh, there's significant government uh, government agency support between immigration, refugees, and citizenship Canada. Uh, there is government support with the cross Canada cross cultural learning center, government province of Ontario, etc. So we're looking at government Titan Trailers and Mike and Sandy Clover working together towards uh, towards creating this, making this all happen. Next slide, please. We have a shortage of available, available workers in the area. Uh, Titan cannot operate at full capacity because of the avail the shortage of workers. There is a local housing crisis, as we all are all aware, in Norfolk. There's no housing available for workers. This is an opportunity for Titan to alleviate its pressure on it for it and other industries. And I'll emphasize other industries as well. While well, Michael and Sandy Clover are financing this and making this happen, it will be available to more than just Titan. Temporary use bylaw is something we discussed. It's a planning tool to be used to allow the temporary use of this property for this purpose. And the application made to the county was only for the existing buildings. It was not for the agricultural land. It will not apply to them. Next slide, please. We're pushing up against our five minute deadline here, uh, Mr. Sullivan. So, and I think I'm done that, at this that point. That was the Mr. end Chair. of the slideshow. 
Thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, and uh, Mr. Holmes, you had your hand raised. So you had a comment? Yeah, on the I just want to. I just want to add to that that uh, since then we've had some work done on the septic system, and it's going to have a maximum occupancy in the building as it sits right now of 45 people. So. Uh, regardless of how the six units are configured, there will be no more than 45 people uh, in, current, or, uh, in the near future in the building until more work is done on the septic system. But uh, for the foreseeable future, it will be limited to 45 spread right throughout the six suites. So, uh, Councillor Martin, you have a question? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um... I guess one general question for staff first, and then I might drill down a little bit more with Mr. Sullivan um, and the applicants. My first question for staff is, um, while this proposal seems well and good in general, um, I support the, the concept and the principle. My question to staff would be, have we had other proponents, other applicants come forward looking to um, kind of diversify the use of, of potential um, sites that they have on agricultural land for this exact reason that we typically have not been in support of? My concern is that um, this is a great opportunity and while I definitely would would like to work with them. My concern is that I want to be equitable and fair with everyone across the board. So I understand each planning uh, application, you know, goes forward on its merits, but sorry, my question would just be, um, is this a request that we receive normally? Um, and, and how do we hand it with other agricultural enterprises or property? Yeah. Through the chair uh, to Councillor Martin. Um, so as far as this uh, specific application, I don't think we've had anything of a similar use um, in per as it pertains to special needs housing um, or the specific population which is being targeted through this temporary um, bylaw proposed. Um, that being said, uh, there is a definite consideration for protecting agricultural land, um, and that's a huge part of the considerations uh, that will be provided to Council through the recommendation report um, about kind of that protection um, and any kind of typically permitted uses or uses that are not typically seen in our agricultural lands, um, and ultimately protecting any prime agricultural use from any sort of expansion of non-agricultural uses in that area. Okay, thanks for that, Nicole. I guess I'm just trying to um, make sure I fully investigate, you know, if, if other agricultural enterprises have come forward to staff or to council before, especially through the throes of in the throes of, of COVID-19, looking for additional accommodations for migrant workers that were, were being fair and equitable. I know that it's not apples for apples, but, um, you know, in principle, it's a great idea and I'm, I'd be looking for a way to uh, to get behind it and support it. Um, I was wondering, these might be more suited to the proponent, the applicant or uh, Mr. Sullivan. So there was mention of children and families, which that's uh, wonderful. I guess part of my question would be um, surrounding services. So this is privately run. It's not um, organized through, you know, the, the province. So um, if Norfolk County gets behind this and supports it in full, how do we ensure that all the services and gaps are being met and filled, especially if we're seeing young children come into the community? Um, I know you've got a lot of space there on that property, but I'm thinking about transportation um, to schools or, you know, just basic health care and those types of things. How do we ensure that we're not just approving a project and then creating a bunch of gaps in caring for you know, yeah, right, Sandy. Yeah. Oh, hi, this, I'm Sandy. Uh, I have investigated this a little bit. I've contacted all the local schools. Unfortunately, I contacted the wrong ones first. So it is Norfolk County that they would go to because of the side of the road they're on. I've contacted both the uh, uh, Catholic School Board and uh, the Public School Board, and they have accommodation. They can accommodate. Everybody was eager to take them on. So um, I did contact I, my doctor, and she said that... Uh, I could meet with someone at the local um, uh, health clinic and they probably could accommodate any of the kids uh, there and the families themselves. So they would probably make accommodations. Um, uh, uh, as far as transportation, most of the families would come with a driver's license. Unfortunately, that's only good for six months. 
but we've also got support from the Ontario government to fast track them to a, to a Canadian driver's license. Uh, we're providing vehicles for them, Mike and I ourselves, uh, for the first little while that they will be sharing both a pickup truck and a, and a car. So it would be a shared vehicle that's available to sign out for them. The school has told me they'd pick up the kids on the bus. So that's not a problem at all. Um, we've looked into a lot of different areas as far as religion. If it was the Afghan, there's about Brantford has a mosque that they could attend. Um, and we do get a lot of help from the various agencies that actually did send the letters of support. They, they are going to offer online training for language. Um, we're planning on putting a playground there for the kids. We've got an area that will support them for childcare if some of the ladies want to go out to work and one of the ladies wants to look after them. So we'll give them a lot of support personally, but there is a lot of support out there for the refugees, whether online or in the community. Everyone I've talked to, to in the community is very supportive and and wants to help help them to integrate. And that's just on a personal level, everybody I've talked to would like as far as I've even talked to the local arena, but I'm sure that that, you know, mm -hmm. sports would be great for them. They're real close for that. So we've tried to look at everything and the beauty about being involved with all these agencies. They've highlighted what the problems are going to be so that we can try to solve them before they get here. Yes. Okay. That Great. Thank you very much, Sandy. I appreciate that. I'm sure that there's, you know, lots of things also that I didn't mention that could come up as potential hurdles, like you've mentioned childcare and, and language. Those are great. Mm -hmm. As long as, um, you know, there's supports, I guess, a safety net from that provincial level that knows, you know, a lot more about this. And I just, I wanted to touch on that. My last and final question through you, Mr. Chair, um, to whomever wants to answer. Um, the, the slideshow talked about the um, temporary bylaw, which I understand it also mentioned seasonal housing. Uh, is that just a planning concept? It's, it's full year round housing, I'm, I'm assuming, or can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, through the chair to Councillor Martin, uh, it is, it is temporary housing. I, if I put seasonal down, it was, it's a misnomer. It's a, it was an error on my side. Okay. So full year round, but temporary. That's my understanding. Thank you. No further questions. That's great. Thank you. I have uh, Councillor Van Driesche and then Councillor Hoffman after that. So, Linda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And through you, I'd like to first of all commend both Mike and Sandy for this humanitarian effort. It's amazing uh, and it, it's very relevant to today's circumstances. There will be more to come, unfortunately. So I commend you for doing this. I know the building, I know the area quite well. You're certainly not taking any way, anything away from the agricultural base there at all. Those facilities were built by the feds many years ago, it was used as tobacco research station as well as um, a research station, um, agricultural research station. So uh, excellent building. I commend you for the uses of it. Um, when you say there's about, uh, uh, the question is, uh, there are about uh, 45, you were thinking, to be able to um, hold in the building for momentarily, or is there room for expansion? Um, I, I, I really think that's a fantastic building and, and should get some really good use out of it. So um, is there potential for more? And, and I know that uh, your agencies are more than happy to have to work with you as well. Yeah, hey, Mr. Mr. Holmes. Dave, do you uh, want to do this? Yeah, I mean, the current septic, uh, the way the current okay. septic system is set up, it, it, it will only accommodate up to 45. Uh, I think there is room in the facility to bring more in, but we would have to upgrade the septic okay. system and go through the environmental process or the, the uh, approval process to the uh, MOECC to, in order to get that. Okay, okay. I, I know it's twofold in the sense that it's helping people as well as bringing uh, much needed workers to the area and uh, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Councillor Huffman. Thank you Chair Van Passen. Uh, through you to uh, the deputation. Uh, first off I just want to say that I, I love ideas that look outside the box. Um, that's I, I just I can't think enough about those kinds of ideas. And especially when we, you know, partner it with a humanitarian effort. So my hat's off in, in terms of that. 
the one question that I'm I'm unclear of that I can't kind of get my hat around is the is the affiliation to Titan Trailers. So like with the individuals yeah. who who relocate to Norfolk County, would the expectation be that they're going to be working at Titan Trailers? And if not working at Titan Trailers, are they still um provided this opportunity for temporary housing for up to three years. Yes, I'll speak to that. Um, initially, what uh, they're, they're very eager to have them have a job as soon as they, uh, well, not as soon as they arrive, but within a few months after that they, they get here. Uh, we have the luxury of having a lot of different jobs to offer, but I've also spoken to the local farmer who that's, that actually rents our land there he would hire people, which is fine, like for, for that job. I've also th just this morning spoke to uh, the executive director of NACL. They are, she's going to present a letter to um, our, in our next meeting with the government officials that they are looking for people that they can train. They can't get enough people to help house, uh, um, help, help to look after the people that they care for. So no, that it, it isn't contingent on that, but as the families go through, they are going to look for families that may be looking for that kind of employment that because we can all already provide it to them. So, so through them, when they choose the families that come, perhaps they are interested in, they're going to tell them the opportunity. If they're interested, they'll have a job. So no, okay. it's not contingent on it, but they will try to find people that will immediately be able to go to work if but we are not making it contingent on them staying there. Yeah. When okay. these when these refugees okay. arrive in Canada, they actually they were when they arrive with, to us, they actually have full Canadian citizenship. Uh, they have uh, temporary OHIP permits that carry them through till their provincial health care funding. So they're actually full Canadian citizens. Uh, mm -hmm. They're free to roam about and do as any other Canadian citizen yeah. would be able to do. There's no there's there's no contingency that they have to work for Titan right. Trailers. Okay, there's and that no was one thing that I was just kind of not getting a clear no. a clear picture on, and I needed I needed some clarification. The other thing that I would I would like to see maybe a little bit more um, um, work done on would be, and I know Councillor Martin kind of touched on this a little bit, but in terms of the healthcare aspect, I think getting more of um, a plan in place for um, obtaining a family doctor <laughs> for these individuals is very important because that is an issue for, you know, anyone moving into Norfolk County. So um, that would be a, a big benefit as we would like to, you know, continue to maintain um, proper health care for any individuals and residents of Norfolk County. So those were, those are yep. my two, my two pieces. Yep. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, we have expressed that to, uh, to the province and they have expressed an, uh, a, a helpfulness to assist in that as well. Okay. Any other uh, members of the committee have questions? I, I do have one uh, myself. Um, when I look at this as a, a business model, um, and, and maybe Mr. and Mrs. Colfer can answer this, how much do you figure this is going to cost you to run every year? Uh, well, it's going to probably... This, this is going to be yeah. in the neighborhood of... <laughs> the initial cost of revamping the building, we're probably looking 200, 200 to 300,000 to revamp this building for these needs. And um, I don't know if you. Well, it's it's not it's not not meant to make a profit. There there is a the government I, does I give them a housing allowance for the first little while. That's what we'll get. It doesn't really matter what it costs us to run the building. It's a it's not a very big. I think it's eight hundred dollars a family or something like that. So so no, it's it's. It, we're not looking at it as anywhere as near a profit making thing. That's, it's, this is not a proper no. <laughs> profit making deal. Yeah, that's, no, it, that's the impression I got. You're going to be but, doing but, something great for Chris, society, not for yourself. So. We've been very, very blessed to live in this country, to, to live in this county, and did very well in this county. And it's it's time to give back a little bit. And I mean, there's lots of need in the county, but there's also lots of need worldwide right now. So it, it just sort of breaks your heart when you see what's happening. So if you can do something, you try to do it. That's really all there is. <laughs> it's 
And I see Councillor Columbus has his hand up. Maybe he's going to give us 50 years of history on that property. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on mute now, Councillor. Mike, I think you're still on mute. Sorry. There. I was just going to say that if there's no further questions, I would appreciate the opportunity to move this recommendation that's in the report. I'd like to make the statement that this is a 158 acre property, which I'm quite familiar with having worked there for a number of years. And uh, there's no disruption to agricultural land, as has been stated by some that there would be. Um, it makes use of a, a high end vacant building that was used for institutional purposes. It's uh, create it fulfills the need for housing in our area and labor shortage, which is quite important. We hear about that every week. And uh, I thank uh, Mike and Sandy for all their hard work and putting this whole package together for us to consider. And uh, there was a question came up perhaps about this being kind of non-traditional. Well, it is non-traditional and unique, but the thing is that's why we are elected when something doesn't fit the proper mold to, uh, to meet all the requirements of zoning or official plan requirements. That's why we're put here in place here as a council to deal with those abnormalities. So I'm pleasing, pleased to support and make this motion. Thank you. And Councillor Van Andrews, you had your hand up. I assume that was to second it. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor Michelli has had his hand up as well. Okay, Councillor Michelli. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I have a question that I had a little while ago, um, and I think this may be for Mr. Sullivan or, or Mr. Holmes. Um, the the uh, suites, there are going to be six suites. What What is the approximate um, square footage of each suite? Yeah. If you're able to tell me that. Yeah, I, the suites are all all different size. So, I mean, the smallest one I think is just under a thousand and the biggest one is closer to 2000, but they're all, they're all different sizes or maybe not quite that big. And all the suites do contain kitchen and bathroom facilities. Okay. Uh, and, yeah. Sorry. No, that that and there's a, there's and and there's other bathroom facilities on the premises as well. You mentioned the fact that IKEA is total. Like, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, and Mr. Chair, uh, just a, a follow-up question to that. So, so if I understand this correctly, we we have six suites that will house somewhere between 40 and 45 people. Uh, it does sound like these suites are, are quite large and I realize that there are additional facilities in the building, but um, is, am I correct that we would uh, be averaging somewhere around maybe seven people per suite? Yes, that is correct. Uh, Immigration Canada has notified us that the average family size is seven to eight of immigrants that are coming in and of the refugees, their, their average family size is in the seven to eight category, so. I see, okay, well, thank you, Mr. Holmes, because that was my, going to be my next question. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilor Martin, you have any questions, but we do have a motion moved and seconded on the floor, but. Uh... I do have just one final technical question, um, if you'd allow it, Mr. Chair, to our staff. Certainly. Thank you very much. Through you to staff, would these buildings be subject to um, health unit inspections similarly to bunkhouses? Uh, through you, Chair, as uh, Councillor Martin, uh, I don't believe they don't fall under the same policies uh, that bunkhouses do, um, the same acts uh, as far as our workers, um, but I know that the public health unit has been engaged through the, the consultation process through the temporary use bylaw uh, circulation. Um, so I can confirm with uh, our public health friends um, kind of what policies and processes would be in place. I think it's typical to a housing model though. Um, so through the building code rather than through health, but I can confirm that for you. 
Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Nicole. I'd be interested in just receiving that when the next report comes forward. Um, again, looking at being equitable, looking at repurposing the space later on, should they um, choose to have temporary farm workers in there? I'm not necessarily advocating that it should be inspected, but I just would like to see the delineation between how we treat this and how we treat other on-farm um, housing situations. So no further questions. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, um, any uh, other questions or debate on the motion? It's a staff recommendation is on the floor. It's been moved by Councillor Columbus and seconded by Councillor Van Andrichy. Seeing no more comments, all in favor? That is carried. So thank you everyone for uh, some good discussion on that one. So, thank you. And thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Clover for um, coming up with the uh, out of, outside the box, was it? Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. It's outside thank, the box. Thank you very much to all of you for your help and support. Thanks. Okay, moving on to report CD 22-013. Application 28 TPL 2021 323 and ZNPL 2021 324. An application has been received to approve a draft plan of subdivision for 30 townhouse units with an associated zoning bylaw amendment to change the current zoning from development zone to residential zone type 4 zone. The zoning bylaw amendment application will require a special provision to reduce the required exterior side yard setback from six meters to three meters. And uh, Mohammed, are you uh, prepared to present this report? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, the screen is yours. Thank you. And good, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the Council. This is a draft. Is now of exiting. And the zoning bylaw amendment application. Uh, the subject lands are located at the south end of the line between Bass Creek Street and Eel Street. The subject lands are strictly subdivided for single detached lots with uh, two public streets running through these lands from east to west, known as Bass Street and Eel Street. The surrounding areas are predominantly residential with mixed of housing types, including singles, semis, towns, and um, sub housing units owned by Ultimate Norfolk Housing Corporation. There is a 1.85 uh, acres of public park at the north side, uh, which is known as uh, Lyons Park. The large vacant lands to the west side are considered as future residential development, which are um, currently vacant. Currently, the site is designated as urban residential in the official plan and zoned as the development. The proposal for this site is a 30 unit street townhouse development within seven townhouse blocks. And this is through the drop down of subdivision where each unit will have their own registered lots. The zone is proposed for development to urban residential four to allow uh, house buildings. There is a stormwater management pond proposed at the northwest corner of the site. Pedestrian connections are proposed within the development to um, within the development and to Lions Park through a servicing easement. And uh, that is located at the north end of this uh, subject land. To service these 30 units, the existing plans in the middle street are to be reconfigured and reoriented, and this will require a portion of Bass Street and Eola Street to be closed and conveyed to the developer. A road closure application of, this, uh, of these roads will be presented by BRT services after this presentation. So if you can see the site, uh, part two and part four uh, represent the portion of existing Bass Street, street and Eola Street that need to be closed uh, through the road closure application. We have received various technical reports in support of, the, of this development, including a planning justification report, functional servicing report, storm water management report, and a traffic impact study. These reports were circulated to staff and agencies, and we already received staff comments on this proposal. There is a uh, 
service connection proposed to the Lions Group. And staff commented that we require more communication with, uh, on this proposal um, through the Lions Park that is proposed. And the staff will work with the agent to explore for alternative solutions. One of the engineering comments states that existing band street and US street at the access from the Gibraltar street needs to be updated as per county standard. And the engineering staff also advised that the proposed stormwater pond need to be adequately accessed need to have adequate access for maintenance. Regarding public comments, we received no public comments at this point for the planning applications and uh, we'll include any future comments in the recommendation report. So the next step is to work with the agent to resolve some of those issues mentioned based on the input from this meeting and any further technical comments we will provide a recommendation report to the council for decision. And uh, that's all from me, and I believe Agent uh, Valley Engineering will do a short presentation, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mohammed. Um, I see Councillor Columbus, you have a question for staff? Yes, I do, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Mr. Chair. And uh, my question, I actually have two questions, and the first one is with respect to uh, servicing through the Lions Club Park there. Would that have to be a, a contribution from the developer towards the county to use that easement if in fact it's going to go through the Lions Club Park? And uh, if we don't use the Lions Club Park, what is the suggestion on where where the uh, services will will be handled on the site? So better chair to uh, Councilor Collins. Uh, the easement that is proposed uh, to the Lions Park is for sanitary conditions and I believe some uh, additional runoff of the stormwater. Uh, if it happens, then it will be through an easement. Uh, I don't believe there will be a contribution, but the contribution will be through the parkland dedication. So generally we ask for a parkland dedication for all residential developers 5% of the uh, proposed lands. So that will be the contribution. And uh, if this solution is approved, then it will be through an easement. They would have to contribute that 5% irregardless of whether they, they utilize the easement through there or not, I take it. Uh, we, are, we are exploring alternative opportunities. I, I think we have, um, we'll have further communication with the agent uh, to see if there is any alternative solutions. I do know that there are some uh, technical difficulties to connect with the other side of the road, which is uh, Gibraltar Street. But there are some existing line up at that side also, but I I think uh, the agent can explain if there is any other part of the challenge to connect with that side. Thank you, Mohammed. My other question is with respect to the property on the west, the light industrial, where the Verspeaking Cartage business was born. I think it's about five or six acres there. And would would that create any hardship to develop that site into a future housing uh, property? Um, with the fact that this business that we're dealing with today is is being uh, developed with streets and that, would that create any hardship for development of that site to the west for residential use? So, Madam Chair, to uh, to the councillor, this is an excellent question. Uh, in fact, during the pre-consultation report, we explored the uh, the surrounding sites and we identified that there are future development opportunities. And that is one of the reasons that we asked the agent to include one of the street, which is in this case UL Street, to continue to, to be connected with, with that land in case uh, in future there is a development happens. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sir Van der Drieci, question. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you, I have concerns over the road, the potential road closures here, and I guess what you would, in the project, would be a recreation of Band Street, Banstead Street. Uh, is there a... Well, is that a better discussion for uh, the other application, Councillor? Oh, I guess so. Okay, I get you. Thank you. If we turn that one down later, this sort of becomes moot, right? Actually, yeah, true. Your point. <laughs> Thank you. 
Any other questions on the uh, application? Uh, seeing none, we have uh, the agent uh, John Valley uh, on the line and the owners Sarah Debbie Dassey and Sam Dassey are available. So uh, Mr. Valley, would you like to make a presentation? This will be the hardest part is getting Mr. Valley to make a five minute presentation. No problem, Mr. Chairman. I'm up to the task today. Um, the clerk has my presentation. If he can post that up, that'd be great. Thank you. I'll uh, just need a little bit of time to pull it. Okay, if you could direct me to when to go to the next slide, that would be appreciated, uh, Mr. Valley. Well, that's fantastic. So thank you very much, uh, members of council. This is uh, a relatively straightforward application. Uh, we're in Delhi, uh, Gibraltar Street is over on the right-hand side and Banstead and Ewell are the two streets that would project into this development. If you could go to the next slide for me, please. Next slide after that. I didn't. Uh, oh, sorry. Thank you. I was I was looking at the wrong screen. So my name is John Valley. Um, unfortunately, Eldon Darbyson has had a last minute uh, family emergency and was not able to be here tonight. So I'm pinch hitting for Eldon and Sarah Devi Dassey, who is our uh, client, along with Sam. Uh, they are both, I believe, on the line if there's any questions for them as well. Next slide, please. So again, Gibraltar Street is to the west. Uh, we have the Lions Park. Uh, we're just south of that, and that's where we're looking for some servicing. Um, basically, this project is an infill. It's uh, surrounded by residential uses on all sides. Uh, this is the kind of thing that your provincial policy statement and your own development application pro policies are encouraging for these type of infills to make good use of uh, land which is in the urban boundary and can be serviced with the in existing infrastructure that you already have in place. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? So we're talking about 32 street townhouse units on 1.3 hectares of land. So we, we're hitting right in, along in the uh, density targets that you are looking for. Up in the top left corner, there's a stormwater nanish pond. You can also see a, a light green shade, uh, which is a walkway, which would connect this property to the Lions Park. So there would be Connectivity, people who live in this area would have a clear path to walk to the park as opposed to having to go out onto Banstead, around Gibraltar, up to Crozier and over to the park. So we're providing that linkage. The linkage is also doubling as a, a servicing corridor and access to the stormwater pond. Um, if you could use, go to the next slide, please. So there is the question of closing road allowances. So this is a little bit of a, a challenging uh, aspect. Um, our initial application was to simply use the existing road allowances that were in place now. The proposed roads are aligning with the existing roads. Uh, so we were proposing simply to incorporate those. Uh, Norfolk County staff have said no, they don't want to do it that way. From their pers pers perspective, it is easier for the county to close the roads, give us the roads, and then we go through the draft plan of subdivision process and give the roads back to the county at the end of the day. Uh, that does allow for the roads to be widened slightly to 20 meters as opposed to 66 feet and these kinds of things to meet current standards. And it also takes the municipality out of the development application for the plan of subdivision as a, as a landowner. So um, we thought we had a simpler way of doing it and just incorporating those existing road allowances, but staff has asked that they all be closed, given to the landowner, and then and then uh, the landowner gives them back to the municipality through registration of the plan of subdivision. Next slide, please. So what we're asking for today is a zoning bylaw amendment and, and a draft plan of subdivision. 
those are the applications before you. So the property is already uh, zoned D for development and we'd like an R4 zoning, which allows this form of townhouses. Uh, we comply with all the provisions in, in the current zone, except we would ask for a reduction of the exterior side yard. You see these applications before you all the time where people ask for a reduction of exterior side yard as a special provision to a zoning. So that's simply what we're incorporating with our request. We do check all the boxes here with the official plan. It's a comp compact form of development in a settlement area. We've got full services. It's complementary to the existing homes in the area. We've got connectivity to the park and we're achieving the density targets as outlined in your official plan. Next slide, please. Again, Mohammed has already outlined all of the, uh, the reports and studies that have been submitted as part of this application, I believe back in August. And we do have, we've, we've reviewed all these planning documents, your own official plan and so on, and we are compliant with all of those documents. Next slide, please. This slide shows our subject lands in green, uh, and then you can see around them in blue and orange, the various forms of either condo multi-unit or semi-detached units. This is just to indicate that we're not introducing a, a foreign concept of land development into the area. There already are uh, townhouses in the area. There are semi-detached multi, multi-family homes in this area. So we believe that this is very much a natural fit into the existing community. Next slide, please. How'd I do, Mr. Chairman? Am I under my five minutes? You are exactly at five minutes by my clock. Ms. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions for the uh, agent or the applicants? Councilor Columbus. Yes, uh, Mr. Valley, when do you anticipate uh, construction, your, your applicant uh, developer, uh, when do they anticipate construction to start? in that particular area if all is approved? So once this is approved, we would still need to go through the detailed design process and approvals with uh, with your in-house staff. Uh, likely that would take upwards of a year. So we're, we're looking at shovels in the ground, say a year from now to start servicing. Thank you. Do you have another question, Councillor Columbus, or is that just your Councillor Van and Beesey? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you, um, I had my questions answered, but I do have a curious question to staff. Uh, what What is the um, thought process of having the road closed, given to the developer, and then given back? What is the purpose of that, if I can may ask that question? So we're going to chair to uh, Councillor Vanden Trishin. Yes. Uh, that is a part of the road closer application. I, I believe Lydia will explain that. Um, I mean, at the next presentation. So okay. uh, maybe you can wait until then. Not, not a problem. Thank you. So any other questions from committee or would someone like to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Councillor Columbus, you want to move the staff recommendation? Councillor Van Andrisi seconds. Any comments, questions, debate? Seeing none, all in favor? Three, four, five. That is carried. Well, thank you everyone for the presentations and uh, we'll move on to our next item here. So the next one is, is uh, staff report CS22-038, the proposed closure and conveyance of unopened parts of Bansett Street and Ewell Street, Plan 216 Delhi. And uh, Lydia Harrison, are you going to be presenting this report so that Councillor Van Andrisi can get an answer to her questions? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Chair Van Passen and committee members. Um, report CS22038 is being presented to the Public Hearings Committee for information purposes and to allow the public an opportunity to express any concerns 
comments, objections, or support with regards to the application uh, made by G Valley, the G Douglas Valley Limited agents for the applicants to close and convey the unopened portions of Banstead Street and Ewell Street in Delhi as part of a proposed plan of subdivision. This report is being presented in tandem with the planning application report. The report provides the nature of the request by G Douglas Valley, along with other related details. Re Realty staff did not receive any public input with regards to the proposed street closures. A further report will be presented to council at a later date for the purposes of a decision. Um, to address the concerns of council and also um, Mr. Valley's comments in regards to the closure and sale of the road allowances and then the rededication of them back to the county once a new plan of subdivision is uh, registered. I would comment that um, the county would would not entertain being an owner through a subdivision process. Um, there's a lot of risk, a lot of liability that's at stake there. We as an owner of lands within that subdivision development, being the roads, Buell Street and Banstead Street, uh, we would be having to go through the planning process as an owner. We could in fact be in conflict with our own planning policies. That could happen. We would have to go through the land titles absolute process with the property owners as well. Um, that is a process conducted by the land registry office uh, system. We'd also have to go through the plan subdivision plan registration process also conducted through the land registration process as an owner. Um, we, we could also even be um, we could also have to join in any future uh, property sales within the plan of subdivision too, because we would be an owner on that plan of subdivision. And as I mentioned before, there is also the risk that's involved, any liability should something go wrong in the development process and could place us in conflict with our own policies and procedures. If the proposed development doesn't proceed for any reason, where does that leave the county as well? Are we involved in legal matters? So on a whole, if you look at it from that perspective and those comments, we are much further ahead to, divide, to divest ourselves of the ownership of these roads so that we don't have to be involved in those processes and um, any liability associated with the development. Um, with those comments, and I hope that I've clarified it for you, uh, staff are here to take any questions from members of council or the public in regards to the road closure application. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Any questions? Follow up, Councilor Vandenberg? You read my mind, Mr. Chair. Um, I just like to confirm that I fully understand the process uh, now, and so I appreciate the explanation and now uh, fully understand the, the point of it all. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the committee? Mr. Seeing Chair, are we going to hear? Are we going to hear from uh, Mr. Valley on this one also? We can, if you would like to ask him a question. Yes, I, I see have he's a question. Still, uh, available, Mr. Go ahead, Counselor. Yes, on uh, on page uh, 135 of our agenda package, it states that Valley Limited has indicated to staff that the housing corporation is interested in selling their vacant lots abutting the northeasterly portion of Yule Street to the Sharmas. Can you give us an update on that, Mr. Valley? I think you're on mute here, John. Sorry about that. Um, I am not able to provide an update on that. I know at one time there was quite a bit of discussion with the housing authority uh, that one time they had some concerns. I think they have withdrawn that. Muhammad, the planner, may have more information on that, but I'm sorry, I, I'm not the file planner on this project and I'm spilling it at the last minute. We could bring that information forward to you at the time of uh, when this comes back to council if that's required. 
Right. OK, thanks. And is there actually anyone else on the line who would like to make comments? Kevin, do we have anyone else from the public? We have uh, no registered speakers for this um, file. And seeing no more hands up, would anybody like to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Councillor Van and move the staff recommendation. Your seconder, Councillor Huffman. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the next staff report is uh, CD 22-014. Application ZNPL 2021 364 and DMPL 2021 372. An application has been received to amend the existing resort residential zone by adding a site specific special provision to permit a smaller lot area, larger lot coverage, and building height for a proposed new vacation home. The application is also associated with a deeming bylaw application. And Mohammed, do you have this file as well? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, through Mr. Chair to the Council, the purpose of this application is to replace an existing dwelling with a new vacation house in the resort residential zone. The subject site is located at 55 Ordnance Avenue in Turkey Point. The surrounding area is predominantly resort residential and the subject land is within 40 meters of the lakeshore line of uh, Lake Erie. The current official plan designation is resort residential and also zoned as resort residential. Through Mr. Chair, as I already mentioned, the proposal is to replace the existing dwelling, which is a one-story dwelling, and the new proposal is a two-story vacation house. Through this, through this zoning amendment, there are a few zoning deficiencies will be addressed, and this will include a reduction, a reduced lot size from 0.4 hectare to 0.086 hectare. This is an existing situation. This really will just uh, formalize the legal non-complying issue. A higher lot coverage from 15% to 24.2% for the dwelling, and Another deficiency will be addressed through a building height increase from 9.1 meter to 10.5 meters. The existing dwelling is situated on two lots, which were created through a historical subdivision, and a deeming bylaw is also under review at this moment to deem them as one lot. We have received few technical comments so far. Engineering staff requires a grading plan for further review. Planning staff will also look at the accuracy of the proposed building height based on the grading plan and elevations. There is a requirement in our zoning bylaw that the top of foundation wall must be 176.5 meters above sea level. And uh, considering the location of the dwelling will confirm that the building height appropriately address this issue and consider the compatibility with the existing property. Uh, one formal comment is received so far by the planning staff. The letter indicated that um, the increase of height and grading is a concern. So we'll, we'll check the compatibility with the adjacent site also. The next step is getting more clarity on grading and building height. Staff will further review additional drawings and put for the recognition uh, report as soon as possible. That's uh, conclude my presentation. I believe the agent is also attending the meeting and uh, I'd be happy to ask any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mohammed. Any questions from committee for staff? Councillor Ravitch. Thank you and through you. 
Um, I, I might have a hard time posing my question. I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, with new applications on Ordinance Avenue, I see that this uh, application is going to be setting um, the domicile back a bit from the road. Do we have a policy in place that requires a setback? Was this a decision that was made by the agent or applicant, or is this a condition that was imposed by staff? I imagine that as um, that roadway is eroded, uh, we don't want um, development occurring directly on that property line. Is there a policy in place that encourages a particular frontage setback? How is that conversation negotiated with uh, the applicant and who is the driver in that decision? I, I know I can make a little yeah. comment about the Turkey Point. Uh, a lot of the houses are in the wrong spot. I don't know who did the surveys, but we do have a zoning bylaw with a front yard, but I'm sure staff or front yard setback, so I'm sure staff can verify that. Yes, I can uh, I can comment on that. I'm Hayden. I'm uh, I'm the applicant. Well, I'm a, I'm the agent for the customer here, Robert and Cheryl Ritchie. I work on behalf of Dawn Construction. Um, as for the setback, obviously we need to meet certain setbacks as designed from Norfolk County and LPRCA. That being said, um, we are also required to meet 50% minimum landscape space. So the reason why we wanted to put the, the house location as it is, is in order to obviously meet the, the front yard setback that we're required to have, but also have that uh, minimum of 50% landscape space still open. Well, that might be a good segue into, uh, we do have Jillian Smith from MHBC Planning, uh, Hayden from Dom Construction and the owners Cheryl and Rob Ritchie all available. And uh, would they like to make a presentation or just answer questions? Um, Jillian, do you have anything you you wanted to present here? Uh, I don't actually have a presentation today. I um. I think between the planning justification report and the staff report that all the relevant information has been covered. Uh, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. And I have a, a Jim A on the screen that uh, has a hand up. Uh, I don't know who that is, but uh, go ahead and ask your question or make your comment. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, so I am uh, the neighbor, two houses, three houses down. Um, family has owned our cottage for 50 years. I've been going to Turkey Point for 40 years and have watched uh, the small cottages all grow into big homes. And I've learned a few things in, in watching that and wanted to ask a, a few questions um, regarding um, that I think come into the lot coverage question. And I'm, I'm not, these are, these are truly questions. Um, First, you know, the storm water management plan for the property, given the larger lot coverage. Um, I actually just learned that, uh, you know, the big Turkey Point drain meeting was canceled, but there is a tremendous problem with flooding in Turkey Point. It used to be in, you know, March and April. Now it's, you know, year round. And, you know, what happened incrementally, every house that gets built is bigger and where does the water go? This property actually was one of the places where the water went behind it. There used to be what we used to call the swamp. And the swamp has been filled in, but the swamp was really a natural stormwater management um, area. And, you know, so that's one question. What is the stormwater management plan given we already know we have a tremendous problem in Turkey Point with stormwater management. And I don't know what the council's, um, you know, view on that pre preventing further stormwater management. Um, so I'll stop there. And related to that is also, you know, lot grading. When new homes go in, it's natural to raise them up. You know, you want to protect yourself from the lake. But really now the bigger the bigger damage could be from, you know, infill of the water. Um, due to all the, the flooding. So that, I'll, that that's one question. I have a second one, but maybe we'll focus on the, the water and water management. 
Mohammed, do you have an uh, answer to that? I know Turkey Point has a set minimum height uh, above sea level that uh, is the starting point for new builds. So, yeah, regarding the regarding the strong water management, we actually asked for the grading to better understand that. So staff did not be able to review that without the grading information, so we asked for it. And um, I would also ask Mr. Uh, Diamond to explain if they have any information about the technical technicality of the starter. Yeah, sure. Um, do you have the grading plan I sent you, Mohammed? You could project them to the screen. Uh, I'm going to send you a grading plan showing our uh, swales, retaining walls, etc., and the setting the top of the foundation wall. Um, we did not receive the grading drawing, drawing yet. Uh, the submission did not include the grading plan. That's what we asked for it. Oh, okay. Well, either way, yes, to answer your question, Jim, um, obviously the LPRCA uh, regulates now that the top of foundation walls for new builds have to be a certain height above sea level, which is 176.5 meters. That being said, unfortunately for all the older cottages in the area, they don't follow that regulation. Therefore, the new foundations have a benchmark and they end up being about a foot, maybe a foot and a half higher than the existing dwellings. Um, in order to keep the water on our property and have it all drain to the road, we have set a grading plan, which obviously I can't project on the screen. I don't have it available, um, but I will send it right to the county after this meeting so they can review it. And um, we are proposing to put a two story armor stone retaining wall around two out of three sides of the property. We're going to put a high, uh, a high point, a benchmark in the back, uh, back south, southeast side of the property, which is going to go into a swale in order for all the water pr to project towards the, towards the street at a 1.5% slope. Um, as for the storm water, uh, issue and the flooding in Turkey Point, that's going to have to be a uh, something that is brought up with Norfolk County and the uh, Long Point Conservation Authority. Councillor Vandendries, you have a question? Yes, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, question of um, public input. Was there any concern about uh, visibility to the lake from the neighbors. Is there anyone that had any complaint because of the size of the uh, new requested dwelling? I think this one's got the channel in the back, so you don't have a, a next door neighbor behind it. So. so you don't have a neighbor behind it then? Well, okay. on the other side of the channel. Well, yeah, I, I just I just see housing around it, and I'm just wondering if there was any, any um, public comment on that. Uh, this is a Through south snack? end ordinance. Okay, I'm I'm not real familiar <laughs> with uh, Turkey Point, so. But but we can ask Mohammed. Were there any other comments on this one? To the chair, uh, no. We just received one, only one comment. It was regarding the filling height, but it was more related to the grading concern. Oh, okay, I get you. Thank you very much. So I had a a, a second comment slash question again another thing i've seen in over the years that happens more and more that you know one house isn't a problem but then when 20 or 30 have them it becomes an issue just like the water is that there's again given the higher lot coverage will there be sufficient vehicle parking i would say you know to the view question not on the front lawns not on the bike lanes and you know kind of even or behind the homes and you know that should also be part of the the discussion um, and again i have no i don't know on this property it is but i know the higher lot area that leaves less room for everyone's vehicles and there are many homes that park in the streets and that's another way of you know spoiling the view for your neighbors one is building the house too too big and too close to the lake and the other one is putting your big SUVs on your front lawns. Well, I don't see any um, request for uh, relief of any of those things, but Mohammed, are they, will they have the required parking spaces uh, that are, are required under the zoning bylaw? So, Madam Chair, yeah, uh, as per the zoning bylaw, they have to provide two parking space for the dwelling space, uh, for the dwelling unit. And that would be um, either on driveway or to the garage. So, and also they have to maintain a 50% landscape area. 
uh, they didn't ask for any relief. Okay, Councillor Kalman, Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I note in the report it says that no residential dwellings for permanent occupancy are permitted. And this looks like a pretty expensive uh, building, pretty expensive cottage that's being built. Is that, is the applicant fully aware of that, that it's not permanent occupancy that we're dealing with here? Yeah, it's just going to be, it's going to continue to use as resort residential. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Jim, you have another question. I'm, I'm granting an awful lot of leeway on this because normally we get presentations from the public. It's not a question and answer. It's not a debating society, but uh, go ahead and ask your uh, question. No, if no, you I'm, I'm, I'm all done. I was just saying thank you. I, I, I'm not as familiar with Microsoft Teams as I am with Zoom, so I don't know how to lower my hand. There we go. Okay. So, so thank you. I, I just part, these are important questions for yeah, point. I, and Jillian. I look forward to meeting you. It looks like a beautiful home, but I've, again, I've seen you over over the years. Each house is a little higher, a little bigger, and then before you know it, we're living in a swamp. Thank you. Yeah, when I was younger, they were 600 square foot cottages. Now they're 300 square foot homes. And if it doesn't have a roof on it, it's a paved driveway. And you'll wonder why the water doesn't drain. Exactly. Maybe, maybe we could talk about permeable driveways. Right? If there are no further questions for staff or the applicants, uh, would somebody like to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Michelle is uh, committee member. Michelle is moving. OK, Councilor Michelle is moving the staff recommendation. Is there a seconder? Did somebody flinch? There we go, Councilor Rabbits. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you, everyone. And I believe that is the end of our agenda. So uh, no other issues to, I would look for a motion to adjourn. There's Councillor Huffman, there she is. Councillor Huffman moves, Councillor Michelle seconds. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you everyone. Apologize for the, uh, a little bit of uh, technical difficulties with your chairman, but uh, thanks for the uh, meeting. Thank you, Chris. Did a great job. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You, Mr. Chair.